it's Fasilia at ActoGames.com here, and today I'm going to tell you how we vlog. <laughs> Lots of people have commented saying they want to vlog, but they're too scared, or they don't know how, or both. But, and some people have just been asking us how we vlog. So we're going to tell you today. Yeah. So I thought maybe before we got into some of the equipment we use and how we do it technically, uh, it might be cool to tell people again how we got started. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell the story? Well, what happened is I was watching a lot of daily vloggers, and we'd call it my daily because I would get up and on the phone or computer, I would go and I would watch. I would normally watch CD Fixie, Shaytards, and Joe Conroy, and we would, and I would just watch those, and we'd call that my daily. But now my daily is this, of course. <laughs> this is our daily now, right? Yes. Definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you remember yeah. the other part of how we first got started? The other part. Well. Why we? Why yeah. we? I guess we yeah. When Cooper was a little baby and he was a newborn, well, they, my dad thought that I would kind of feel like I was losing all my attention because it's a big thing being an only child for like six years, six and a half probably, mm -hmm. and then you have a sibling. It's a huge change. I mean, so he decided that we would go somewhere, anywhere in the United States for a trip so it wouldn't feel like I'm being ignored and my little brother gets all the attention. Mm -hmm. So he, he told me to choose anywhere in the United States where we'd go, and I almost immediately said VidCon. No, no hesitation, it's just VidCon is a place I've always wanted to go, and I've heard that CTFXE and Shaytars were going there, and I really wanted to meet them. So we decided a few days after that we would start vlogging to see if we could have some content up when we went there. So we hit day 51, the last day of VidCon. Yeah. So we decided let's try and make it to 100 now. And we made it to 100, of course. We said 200, and then we said a year. Yeah. And now we're going to try and do it for two years. We've already hit a year just recently. So we're going to try and do it for two years now. So a good thing to have when you're vlogging is like a goal to do. Like, I want to vlog until VidCon ends, or I want to, I want to vlog until next VidCon, or I want to vlog for a year. Or And it's always good to have goals and always have a goal, so you have kind of a motivation to keep vlogging because if you if I didn't have a goal I probably wouldn't have been able to keep it up for as long but I had a goal I said I wanted to get, I want to get to a year so I'll do it every day until I get to a year. That's a great point. So it's yeah. always good to have like a goal to motivate you to vlog. That's a really good point. Yeah. And you don't always have to do it every single day of your life. Mm -hmm. That's just what I do. Mm -hmm. You can do it every week, every month, every year. Whenever, whenever you, want. you want to. Whenever you got something to say. Yeah, mm -hmm. but whenever you got something to say you can upload a video. It doesn't have to be daily vlogging, it could be weekly vlogging, or it could just be vlogging where you post a vlog every day. And even before I did vlogs, I still posted videos, so they don't have to be qualified as vlogs if you put, post a video every once in a while. Because okay, so one thing that I remembered while you were talking about that was that when we first decided that we were going to go to VidCon, and you were talking about going, and I mentioned something about maybe you trying to do a little vlog, um, because you were really into it and you really loved what those guys were doing. And so I, I, most people probably know from like the Ask Presley and stuff like that, that Presley's homeschool and a big part of our homeschooling for Presley is trying to show her that you can kind of do what you want, whatever you want, as long as you're passionate about it and you really want to try it. You should never think I, I can't do that. Like that's not in my capabilities or there's some only that person is special and can do it, but for some reason that I, I can't. So we want Presley to always feel like she can try anything and, and see what she can do and try to accomplish a lot of things. And obviously you never accomplish anything you don't try. Mm -hmm. So we just suggested, hey, well, you, if you want to give it a shot, we'll try it. And you said that uh, uh, having a bunch of videos and doing a vlog before we go to VidCon would make you feel like a real YouTuber mm -hmm. when you went instead of just a fan mm -hmm. going to YouTube the first time. So you really wanted to feel like you were a creator um, and not Which, just a, um, a fan. Yeah. I don't know if I, f I don't remember much of last VidCon, so I don't know if I really felt much like a creator, 
But this VidCon, I definitely felt like a creator, and I felt like I had fans out there, and I felt like I I felt kind of like CTFC or Long or whatever, and I felt like I had fans, and yes. I was a YouTuber now. Yeah, you felt like it a little bit last year too, but I think more this year, definitely. Yeah, because definitely I am, especially because now of the huge explosion of subscribers due to Ali and Charles, <laughs> just makes me now feel like, oh my gosh, I am definitely a real YouTuber now. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, uh, uh, and that whole time, so talking a little bit about how we vlog and what we do, let's, uh, you know, people probably are interested in some of those things, so let's talk a little bit about some of the stuff we use. So that whole time, while we were getting ready for VidCon and at VidCon and after VidCon for a long time, uh, we used my iPhone. Um, that was almost exclusively what we used, and it was an iPhone 4 at the time. Uh, I've upgraded to a 5 since then, and we used the 5 for a long time. Don't we have, like, a 5S or something? Uh, I don't know what we got now. Maybe. It's an iPhone. It's an iPhone That's 5. all I know. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, we used these for, for, for a long time. All of the early videos used these. And um, there's three shortcomings mm -hmm. from using the iPhone, um, that I found, at least. Um, one was that it doesn't work great in low light. So if you're outside and it's kind of getting dark or something, the, the, the picture degrades pretty quickly. Um, the microphone's not really good, so if you're not in a really good controlled sound environment, it doesn't work very well. So like, maybe if, um, uh, if it's bad to like use a phone in a museum because there's lots of people there. And yeah, or like at the, I think at the cons is probably when I really noticed it when I was trying to shoot video of you at some of the uh, anime conventions. It was The sound was really bad, and it was definitely the museum and places like that. So yes, any kind of crowded environment or outside with the nature and stuff like that, the, the audio is really bad. Uh, the last thing is it shoots really narrow um, compared to a camera like what we're using now, which we'll show you here in a second. Um, and in fact, I'll plug this in. Let me uh, put the iPhone on a tripod and I'll shoot a little video of the same shot with uh, both these cameras and you can see what it looks like. Okay, so we're back now and I have the camera going and the iPhone's going, they're right next to each other. So you can, I'll switch back and forth between them and you can see a little bit of uh, how tight the iPhone shot is compared to the camera. And it doesn't always cause a problem, but I definitely noticed that I was having to get way back uh, to get everything I wanted in a shot, and then because the microphone is not great, I'd be further away, and it wouldn't pick up the sound as well. So it was kind of a problem. So you can kind of see how those go. And this, and the iPhone is actually set lower, so yeah. so it could be like a lot lower than. And while we're at it, um, I'll show you this. Uh, adorable. It's not really adorable, but it's cool. This little uh, phone tripod just has a little like spring clip that holds the phone in. Uh, we upgraded one or bought one of these pretty early on because we would sit at the table like this and have our little conversations like this, press this perspective and stuff. And so clipping I the think phone we into here. It was like a cardboard box and we were leaning the phone against it. I think we did yeah. that before we bought one of these, and I think you're absolutely right. So pretty low tech, um, and for you know a half a year or so, uh, we got by using an iPhone and a little tripod every once in a while, but a lot of times just holding the iPhone is all we did. So that's all you really need. And then if you shoot a video on here that you don't need to edit, if you just one take and it's all perfect, then I mean, there's just a button to upload it straight to YouTube, like it has created an account on YouTube. Yeah, and before, I, I didn't even know about that, and I think some older phones don't have that option. I'd use the app called YouTube Capture, where I would shoot a video and it would go straight to YouTube. And before I was vlogging, I was still uploading videos because I felt really bad having a YouTube account with no videos on it. Right. So I made little animations and I uploaded them to YouTube. So I would kind of edit like little, I would make little pictures and I would of course use Scratch to animate, which now has changed a ton since I used to animate with it. Yep. So I'm trying to find a new animation tool. Mm -hmm. So I would shoot little videos of the computer like from the phone, like I would sit on my chair and I would make it like shoot the computer of my little animations. I made a Harlem Shake. I made a few little animations. And it was, this was, of course, way back when Harlem Shake was a thing. <laughs> I mean, I bet some of you don't even know what the Harlem Shake is. And I shot that with YouTube Capture, and I would upload it to YouTube. So it's you don't really need an expensive camera and all this expensive equipment or a microphone yeah. or anything to upload to make content. You just need a phone and some content to put on. Yeah, a lot of YouTubers use phones. I mean, it's great because it's in your pocket. You have it with you everywhere you go. Anytime you want to shoot something, you've got it and it's ready to go. So that's one of the reasons we loved it. And that's also one of the reasons why when we decided to upgrade to a camera, uh, we went to the PowerShot. And uh, we bought a PowerShot 330, which was a great little camera. 
This uh, one is dead. Yeah, this one's broken now. Rest but in peace, camera. It, uh, it's still really small. It still fits in my pocket. It's I can carry smaller. it around. Yeah, it's, it's thicker, but it's smaller. Mm -hmm. So I could carry it around really easily. I had it in my pocket. could take it out and shoot video wherever we were and whatever we wanted to do. Shot great video, wider field of view. The microphone was better. It's not awesome, but a lot better. So this was a big improvement. And this lasted us until when? The Great Sand Dunes. Great Sand Dunes. Which was actually not that long ago. Not that long ago at all, yeah. So it got sand in the mechanism, so when the lens was, tries to pop out, it won't pop this out. This guy has been with us for like over a year. So it was a long time. But this was a, this was a really big upgrade. Um, you could probably look back and see when we started using this, and you could tell... Uh, the, the quality got a lot better, but it's still portable. It's easy to shoot. It's easy to do. We have, you know, a nice big camera that we could shoot with, but, you know, we don't want to lug it around all the time. So I was really happy with this. And then when it died, um, we started looking to see what a slight upgrade from this kind of staying. We're really happy with the power shot. So we bought the 110. And the 110 is what we're shooting with right now. Um, I'll try and get a shot of it with under one of these other cameras uh, for the vlog. Here's the 110. Uh -huh. Yes, it's uh, really cool, and maybe it's actually a touchscreen camera now. It is, is a touchscreen cool. camera, yeah. Um, it's a pretty cool idea. I never knew touchscreen cameras exist until I got this guy, mm. and it actually has a rougher texture on the front, which mm. makes it easier to hold. Yeah, I, I, yeah, all around better camera. Um, really happy with it. Uh, I can't imagine anything I want more. I wish it had an external mic uh, input, but that's about the only thing that I, I would do differently on this camera. Really happy. Okay, so one thing that we forgot to mention was uh, while we were at VidCon last year, they were selling these eye poles in the expo hall. So and awesome. it has exactly the same kind of connector that's in that little tripod. Your phone just snaps in, you turn it on, and then you can shoot. You know, you can, like, it's like you've got really long arms while you're taking a selfie. And it makes a really cool effect. Uh, I'll try and find a couple of videos that we shot. Okay, so that gets us to actually where we are from a camera standpoint. We started with the iPhone. Uh, we bought the 330, which is a great little camera, but it broke a couple of months ago. And then we bought the 110. We've been shooting with a 110 ever since, and uh, very happy with the 110. I expect we'll keep using it until it breaks. And again, if you've got good light and good audio control, uh, I think you're in fantastic shape. Um, with the, you can't go wrong with the 110. But if you really just want to get started, just shoot some stuff with your phone, talk, post it. Um, that's really how we got started. That's like what, like that's. By the way, all of you who want to vlog, like want to vlog but don't know how, that's how, that's how you start get started vlogging. Phone, record, talk. Record your talking, upload to YouTube. Bam, you are on well on your way to having a very successful daily vlog. That's <laughs> right. So yeah, everybody's got something to say. You just have to think about what you have to say and record it on your phone and post it on YouTube. Right? Okay, so that's uh, cameras. That's still what we're using today and what we've used ever since we started for the past year or so. Um, the other thing, uh, like I said, the microphone wasn't really great on the iPhone, and it's better on the power shots, but it's still not fantastic in a really noisy environment. And so what I ended up buying was a good microphone that was sort of very focused, so you can't hear the stuff that's going on around her. Like, if you say, uh, di kind of not a really diagram, but if you stick a balloon on mm -hmm. the top of this microphone, like shove a little balloon, we don't have any balloons at hand right now, hmm. then that's where it picks up audio. Anywhere outside of this balloon will not be picked up and you can't hear outside, which makes it very unrealistic and it sounds like you're doing a voiceover. Yeah. So I recommend that you shoot some background noise before you do it and kind of put that on the background so it doesn't sound like you're doing a voiceover. Yeah, so we start. We used it the first time in the museum, like when we were going and finding the gnomes. Uh, when I got home and I listened to it, uh, there was just, there was zero background noise. You couldn't hear the crowd in the museum, and so it sounded like Presley was in. Just a, the museum was closed, like there was no noise. It sounded like a voiceover. It sounded really artificial. Yeah, it kind of sounded like we had booked out the whole museum. Yeah, it did. For a it sounded really. Thing. It was really kind of bizarre sounding. So uh, what it ended up doing was. Uh, I shot, we used the microphone and it went into this nice little recorder, um, the HD1, uh, which I, or the H1, sorry. Uh, we got a review of both of these, I think. I'll put links in the description to our reviews of these I things if you want to check them out. Time, yeah, we may have reviewed them together. Uh, so I'll put reviews to where we shot these. So the, the sound was being recorded under this guy, but I was shooting with a camera. And the camera mic was also picking up, like, oh, it was too loud. It was a lot of ambient noise. You could barely hear Presley. 
um, but I put them together in the editing software and took the camera noise way down so that there was some background noise but left the you know uh, microphone volume up so her voice was really clear and it turned out to be just perfect. It came out great. So you, I just all I had to do was line up the two audio tracks and everything was great. So what we recommend is just so it's not like really hard lining up my voice with like the background noise in the camera is taking your camera or whatever you record with that's not like a mic like this mm -hmm. but like your camera most likely and just shoot the background noise and then you can just plop that in the background without having to do any voice lining up and stuff. Yeah, so it's called getting ambient noise, right? You just turn the camera on, you let it record. Like if you're going to shoot a 30 second clip of Presley talking, we'll shoot 30 seconds of silence, or not really silence, but just the background noise without Presley talking. And then we'll shoot the clip of Presley talking and we'll put them on top of each other. And now you've got Presley talking in the microphone with good normal background noise. Yeah, so it's a good way to do it. So it doesn't sound like we booked the whole museum to make one vlog. So there's That's absolutely right. no one in there. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so that is audio. That's really kind of what we do from an audio standpoint. Uh, let's talk just a little bit about lighting. Uh, again, we reviewed these lights when we got them. I think they're called Fancier Studios is the name of the company that made them. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, model they are. Um, but, but there'll we'll, be a link to the review. Yeah, the we'll put a link to the review, and then they, they were pretty cheap, like one hundred and fifty dollars or something off Amazon for a well, three light exactly kit. Well, cheap. But. Well, for a three light kit, soft boxes, it's pretty yeah. good. That's, it's not super expensive. So, um, and they do a really great job. We have three of them, like I said. The only time we use all three is when we're doing some green screen stuff downstairs. Um, normally, there's one up here, so we're just using one right now to light this. And then there's two that we use downstairs when, when Presley's up against the white screen downstairs, kind of in the little studio area. Um, we'll show a picture of how the studio looks. Yeah, we'll go down there in a second and show us what that looks like. But yeah, the, 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 that little light rig has worked great for us in the house. Anytime we're inside, it breaks down. We carry it with us occasionally if we're going to go somewhere. But usually we just use it when we shoot here. Uh, your best bet, again, if you want to get started and on the cheap, is sunlight. Like there's no light better than natural sunlight, so getting in a nice quiet place outside with some decent sunlight and your iPhone uh, will shoot a really beautiful video, right? Uh, so just so we keep moving along and don't go too long here, uh, downstairs we've got just a little setup. It's actually the, the, I've got a front projector where we play video games and things like that, so it's got a big white screen on the wall. Um, the basement's unfinished, and there's like crap piled down in there. That's it's, it's sort of a junk storage area with just a little space cleared out for the video game area. And Presley stands in front of that little screen when we shoot the the vlogs on the white screen. On like a little piano bench. She's standing on a piano bench um, with this tiny white screen behind her, and the light set up and pointing at her. And around her is just chaos. But the important thing to know and is a lot that all of the times, even sometimes. Like, there's background noise of my brother running around upstairs mm -hmm. and my dog running around. And then we have to and stop and do retakes yeah. quite a bit. We're like, so, like, it's always really hard because we're shooting downstairs. Yeah. And there's all this chaos happening upstairs that we don't know about since we're downstairs. <laughs> so, we, so, like, oh, my gosh, can we please just do a vlog in peace? <laughs> so, the important thing there to know is that what's behind you, like, all this piece you can see is all that matters. Anything can be going on anywhere else. If you've got one little clean wall, one little clean spot on the wall, you can shoot the vlog. Uh, editing software, uh, I, I do almost all of them on iMovie on my Mac, which is free, sort of came with a Mac. Um, I, I'll show you a little clip of me editing yesterday's vlog. I did a little screen capture of that. Uh, sometimes if I need to do something on Presley's computer, which is a PC, uh, I'll do um, uh, Movie Magic, Windows Movie. which is free as well. You can get the, both of those are free. You don't have to pay for anything to get your editing done that way. Uh, we do use Premiere and After Effects a little bit when we're doing something pretty fancy, but that's really rare. You don't need those. Uh, we're probably going to put Final Cut Pro on the laptops and the Macs. Uh, just for some of the editing stuff that we want to be able to do that we haven't been able to do yet. Um, but you can really get away. Every vlog that we've posted in the year uh, has been done probably, I, I can, with maybe one or two exceptions, everything has been done with uh, iMovie or Movie Magic. Uh, Mostly iMovie, though. Mostly, yeah. The vast majority is done on my laptop with iMovie. So, again, not a huge investment in uh, what you have to do to, to cut together some stuff and edit together pretty well. Um, the Let's Plays that Presley does, um, screen captures are done with Bandicam, and we use the free version of Bandicam forever. It just had the little Bandicam.com logo on the bottom of it when she was shooting those. And it would take, it would only do, but it would uh, only take for 10 minutes, yeah. but we recently bought the new one, and it will record for as long as you want it to. Right, so we use Bandicam uh, for screen capture on the PC. 
Uh, QuickTime on the Max has a built-in screen capture, so when I screen captured like me editing her video yesterday, that was just QuickTime on the Mac, which is free. So again, you're not paying for anything there. Um, we normally uh, we try and shoot a vlog on one day and post it the next day. Um, we get time to edit. Yeah, good time to edit there. We get behind a fair amount though, so a lot of times we'll shoot a vlog and post it on the same day, just because we don't have we we skipped a day of shooting, and so we'll end up like right now. We're shooting this video today, and I'll post it tonight. But we shot another video earlier today, and so that'll be tomorrow's vlog, and we kind of get back on track. But that's kind of our routine is shoot one day, post the next day. That's why our, our dates are a day behind, you know, if you look at the videos that we're posting. Um, what else? What else is important to say? You said everything I wanted to. Okay. Uh, do you have anything? I don't think so. So what's the important things about starting your own blog? Well, you don't have to do it every day. You could do it kind of whenever you want to. It doesn't really matter when you do it as long as you do it. Mm -hmm. And you could, just, you could just start out by using an iPhone. And then, of course, you could upgrade to a camera and get some of the equipment we have here. And you don't always have to edit it. You can just use YouTube Capture the Upload to YouTube button mm -hmm. on your phone. And you can just kind of shoot and you can say whatever you want and then you can upload it straight to YouTube if it doesn't require any editing or anything. And you just don't have to be have it be super professional. It just has to be a video of you talking about whatever. I mean, yeah, it In fact, to... it's probably going to be pretty bad when you start. Mm -hmm. It takes a while to kind of get in the hang of it and get in front, yeah. comfortable in front of the camera and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you got to get started and you got to yeah. get through that part. Especially if you have stage fright, mm -hmm. it'll be really hard. And pe a lot of people get really nervous about talking in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. But what helps me is I imagine I'm talking to my friend or my parent or whatever. And freaking like they don't know about what I'm talking about and mm -hmm. how I would explain it to them. So I just like talk about, think I'm talking to like my friend and I'm telling them about what happened. Right. And, That's good like, advice. What was your other advice for keeping going? For keeping going? Yeah. You need, you're prob you don't need, but you should have a goal. You should have a goal that will motivate you to keep going. Like, if you have no goal, then you'll probably stop a lot, lot earlier yeah. than you do if you don't have a goal. Like, I had a goal to go to VidCon, so I made it to VidCon, and I did it every day, even though sometimes it was hard. But I wanted to make it VidCon, so I made it to VidCon. And I wanted to make it a year, so I made it to a year. So it's always best to have a goal about what you want to do so you can have that goal and it can kind of like motivate you. Like, I'm going to be able to do this. That's really and good advice. So yeah, so just uh, get started. You know, record a video, post a video, mm -hmm. uh, post a link to it down in the description. Uh, the subscribers will see it and check it out and we'll go check it out too. Yeah, so we'd love to see your videos. Okay. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!